if you're deleting files on your NAS and you're not seeing any of the storage space reclaimed, there's probably a pretty good chance that you need to empty your recycle bin. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how you can use the storage analyzer to view the total size of your recycle bins, view and delete the files in your recycle bin, then how to automate this process. Stick around until the end if you aren't seeing the storage space reclaimed after you empty the recycle bins, because we'll be taking a look at exactly why this might be happening, and it's good to understand this process from beginning to end. So the first thing to understand is when you create a new shared folder, you have the option to enable the recycle bin. And when you enable the recycle bin, you have to go in and empty that recycle bin. If you aren't emptying the recycle bin, or you don't have an automated task to empty the recycle bin, the storage space will slowly increase as your NAS is actually saving all of those files and expecting you to either go through them and delete them or to restore them. So if you think that you might have a lot of storage currently being utilized inside of the recycle bin, the best thing that you can do, in my opinion, is to use the storage analyzer to get an exact total for how much storage space the recycle bin is actually using. So I'll leave a pop-up now at a video that will show you how to set up the storage analyzer. But if you launch that tool and you analyze your most recent report, you're gonna be able to navigate through all of your shared folders and you're gonna be able to see exactly how much storage space the recycle bin is currently taking up. So now that you know how much storage the recycle bin might be taking up for these specific shared folders, you can go through and easily view them and you can restore any files that you might need to or you can delete them. Now there's two ways to delete them. You can either individually delete them or you can delete them in bulk. To view and individually delete these files, you can open up File Station, you can navigate to the shared folder, and then you can select the Recycle folder. Inside of that folder, you're gonna see all of the files that are currently deleted. So if you'd like to restore anything from here, you can right click it and use the Copy To or Move To feature to move it back to that shared folder or move it somewhere else. If you wanna individually delete it, you can right click it and delete it from here, and then the file will be deleted. Now that's the way that you can go through and individually view and delete the files. Now, if you'd like to delete all of the files for a shared folder, you can go through and you can either delete them all by highlighting them all here, or you can open up the control panel, select shared folder, you can edit that shared folder, and then you can select empty recycle bin. This will empty the recycle bin for this shared folder only. This is also the location where you can enable the recycle bin. So if you find that one of your shared folders doesn't have the recycle bin enabled and you'd like it enabled, you can just check off that option here. Now keep in mind that you can do this in bulk as well. So if you go through and you say that you wanna delete all of the recycle bin files, you can select action and then empty all recycle bins. And this will go through and it's gonna delete the recycle bin files for every single shared folder that you have. This will just clear everything out. So you have to make sure that you really want all of the files deleted. So at this point, we understand how you can view the total size of your recycle bin. You can go through and you can either restore the files or delete them individually, or you can delete them in bulk or even on the shared folder level itself. Now, the best thing to do, in my opinion, is to go through and automate this process to ensure that this doesn't continue to happen. Now this comes with a disclaimer that if you're somebody that wants to actually utilize the recycle bin the way that it's traditionally used, meaning that you delete a file and it doesn't get permanently deleted until you go through and empty the recycle bin, you probably don't want to set this up. However, if you're somebody like me and you delete a file and after a certain period of time you want it to automatically delete from your recycle bin, you can set up a recycle bin task that will automatically run based on a retention schedule that you specify. Now to do that, you can open up the control panel and select task scheduler. From there, select create, then schedule task, and then recycle bin. In the general section, give the task a name, and then in the schedule section, you can specify when you'd like this task to run. So I generally do this daily, but you can set this to run whenever you'd like. Now the task settings are where you really are going to specify when the files get deleted and from what shared folders. So if you wanna just blanket delete all recycle bin files, you can select this first option, which is empty all recycle bins. If you wanna go through and only delete the files for specific shared folders, you can select that option as well. So for example, if you have a shared folder that has a lot of files that are constantly added and deleted, you're probably gonna to wanna to automate that process, but you might not wanna do it for all of your shared folders. So you can select that option here. Now at the bottom, this retention policy section is where you're gonna determine when the files get deleted. 
So I generally use the number of days to retain deleted files and I'll set that at 30. This just ensures that the files are retained for one month and then they get deleted automatically. If you'd like that to be shorter, you can go through and set that as a week or two weeks or even less than that if you'd like. There's the third option of limit recycle bin by size. I generally don't use this because I like to be in control of what is exactly being deleted and when it's being deleted. So I know that if I delete a file today, it will be automatically deleted 30 days from today. With this option, it's just gonna limit the recycle bin by size. So if you set it as 10 gigabytes, for example, you can go through and specify that you wanted to delete the large files first, or you wanted to delete the old files, but you have to understand that you're only gonna have 10 gigabytes in total of recycle bin files. So that's why I generally like to use the uh, option above that to retain files for 30 days, but whatever works for you is the setting that you can use. There's also advanced settings, but I'm not sure that many people will actually use these. However, if these are any settings that you'd like, you can go through and configure them here. So at this point, if you configure this, your recycle bin will automatically empty based on the retention schedule that you specified. You just have to remember that if you're not emptying all of the recycle bin files, you'll have to manage the ones where you're not individually. So now that you went through and deleted all the files in your recycle bin, or at least deleted some of the large ones that might be taking up a lot of space, you might notice that the space does not get reclaimed immediately. And you might be questioning why, because you went through and you deleted it. And the thing that you have to remember is that if you're using Synology snapshots, which you should be, the file has to be retained in order to restore it. So understanding how snapshots work, you're freezing that file at a point in time. So if you go through and you delete it today, even from the recycle bin, it might still exist in that snapshot from yesterday. So also understand that snapshots have a retention schedule and you should set that up individually. And I have a separate video for snapshots. I'll leave a pop-up for that now if you're interested in setting them up. But if you don't see the space right away, there's probably a pretty good chance that that's the reason why. So you can go through if you really want to and you can delete all of the snapshots. And over the course of a few hours, because it's not immediate, you'll see the space is slowly reclaimed. However, you have to understand why you're using the snapshots. The snapshots are there to protect you. So if you have the storage space available, meaning that you're not right up against the cap, it's probably a good idea to just let the NAS run as it normally does, and the space will slowly be reclaimed as those snapshots are deleted. However, if you're somebody that needs the space right now, you can go through, look at the snapshot list, delete all of them, and you will get all of your space back. So I'm hopeful that this video helped you guys out. If it did, please give this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you. And if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks guys.